the weather is bipolar, so I'm just going to jump on really quick to be able to welcome everybody to another episode of Blooms for You. Before the circumstances are such that I don't have any left, let me get this little series out. Hi, thank you for joining me. Oh, let's have a quick look, see, at Cousin It here. Cousin It is quite fed up as well, I must say, losing blooms thick and fast. But for now, for this episode, welcome to a blooms for you from southern Spain, where it's windy and blustery. And in Germany, we would call this typical April weather. Rain, sun, rain, sun, wind. The weather can't make its mind up. April wetter. But no, we've got that now at the beginning of March. Okay. As long as the temperatures stay the way they are, I'm able to cope because most of my orchids are outside. The nights are mild and that is fine by me. I guess there's a compromise to everything. Anywho, yakity yakity yak, let's go and see what is blooming. What could I salvage over the rainy days? And who can I knock off my list to say thank you? Meanwhile, all these blooms still on Cousin It, all the way around. They bloom for everybody who's watching this video, who has subscribed and commented, but is not mentioned today. All right, let's go. Third Cymbidium spike is opening up, almost fully open. And I am going to take advantage of these blooms at this stage because if it rains for the next four or five days, then I won't have any blooms whatsoever to give away to Liko Wahin. I hope I'm saying that name correctly, Liko, but I do want to not miss the mark here. To have these blooms looking so gorgeous while they are still in a good condition. I don't know how the rain is going to affect their appearance in a couple of days. They might fade, they might not. But my goodness, I'm not going to take the risk. I want Liko Wahin to know that. I want to say thank you so very, very much that I have my third Cymbidium spike blooming for you to say thank you. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. Now this little no ID Cymbidium really is probably not the most spectacular when it comes to the most exotic kind of orchid. But I don't see anything less beautiful and remarkable about her. If I could just have more Cymbidiums, I would. I do like them very much. They are reliable. They don't cause me any problems. On the contrary, I cause them problems because my climate is so dry that I get all these dry tips on the plant there, which is a shame. But my goodness, they just seem to think, okay, never mind. I've got water, I've got fertilizer. I'm just gonna bloom and bloom she does. And it's just getting so pretty. Now I call her beach balls just because of some of the shape and colors that remind me when her buds are forming. Not quite like the buds in the back there, but you see the one over the top there on peeking out with those white little lines now showing through from the petals and sepals. That reminds me of beach balls. <laughs> so my little Cymbidium no ID, Liko Wahin. Sorry about that jiggle. Sorry about the wind on the camera. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It is so important for me though, however, to get these dedications out. It means a lot to me that you take the time to watch my videos, to comment, to subscribe. I want to get to the names as they come on and appear on the list. And if I mess up on a blooming, like I did with my cat Leah Little Fairy, then I'm not going to dedicate those blooms. If it's weather condition that's gonna mess me up to dedicate a blooming, I'm going to get in there as quickly as possible to at least let the person know that there are blooms that are fighting to look gorgeous for you to say thank you. Let's hope that this year they're not gonna be taken out so fast by bad weather. It would be a shame. They really are usually quite long lasting, but not if the conditions are what we are considering they're gonna be in the next couple of days. Wet, humid, and quite rainy, so 
We might need to make a video on botrytis. I hope not, but it could happen. Liko wahine, anyway. My third spike here is still looking gorgeous at this point in time. So thank you very, very much for being here on my channel. I am going to take advantage of a break in the weather because I really want to get my Lelia Harpophila on film and share her with you nocturnal butterfly because I think it's just the most cutest, daintiest, frilliest, oh, delicate little bloom to match a butterfly attributes and characteristics of a butterfly. So I thought it would be absolutely fitting to dedicate my little Lelia Harpophila blooms to you, Nocturnal Butterfly, to say thank you. Thank you so much for being on my channel. Now I have a very strange angle here, and that is because I'm looking to replicate the color on camera as is to the naked eye. And I think I got it. I think I made it because if I move around here too much, she's going to go into different shades of yellows and get all bright. But this is the orange, her original orange. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? And that lip, I'm going to edit it in such a way so we can get a little bit closer because if I move the focus or the zoom, it's going to take that color and wash it out. Isn't this just the cutest thing ever? Oh, I'm so pleased with this little one. This is, look at that little frilly lip there. This is a ridiculous Lelia. She came to me very weak, very sad, not very good leaves, but she was blooming size as you can see here. This is her blooms from before, not in my care. This is my first blooming right here, and I am not disappointed. The wait was worth it. Now I'm hoping that in future she becomes a little bit more vigorous and not just, you know, one growth at a time. Multiple growths would be nice, but you know, again, here the greed of an orchid grower kicks in. I should be happy that the first little growth that she grew with me is actually blooming. I was not expecting that. You can see, let me see if I can turn and then not lose the color of the blooms. Oh, we go a bit out of focus. I gotta be careful here. I've been trying to do this for several minutes before hitting record and get the wind to stop messing about. But you can see that the orchid as such is not, you know, she's not bushy or very vigorous. And this is the first growth she ever grew with me. And I am not risking her blooming. I'm not risking the health of the plant because she is chock-a-block full of roots in that pot. I love it. I really, really love it. Very, very happy. Very, very pleased to know one little growth from a weak little orchid gave me this. And I'm going to give it straight on to you, Nocturnal Butterfly saying thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really appreciate it. I hope that you are doing well, and I hope that when you see this video, you like my little choice. Standing to attention for Tom Saunders and Dionysia Theodosis is my Rincolalia digbiana. One bloom for each of you to say a massive, massive thank you so much for being here on my channel, for supporting me, also for your emails. So appreciated. I cannot tell you. Loving, loving, loving the communication and the tips. I have to say that there's got something about it when it comes to a cloudy day. This color is now showing true on camera. I am not entirely sure if I remember correctly whether on my care collab, my Digbiana looked the way she really does look in real life. Well, here she is in real life, looking as true to her colors as the naked eye can possibly, possibly muster. Incredible. I think that it's a beautiful, beautiful orchid. I can gush about her for a long, long time. 
And I'm so happy that I have two blooms this year because for Tom Sanders and Dionysia Theodosis, I am so happy to be able to give these two blooms to you. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, Dionysia, I'm sorry, I don't know my thank yous in Greek. <laughs> Muchas gracias, uh, maybe, that's, I know, that's Spanish, but, you know, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't, every time I put the Google sound, how do you say it, how do you say it, I was, I was lost. So I do apologize. <laughs> Saying thank you in English is all I've got at this point in time. <laughs> so with regards to the fragrance, I was having a bit of a moan, a meh moment in my care collab regarding the fragrance. And yeah, we've still got the citrus, but there is something else this year. There's still that undernote of, mm, ooh, you know that, oh, I wish I hadn't smelt it that intensely. <laughs> but other than that, my goodness, these blooms are to die for. Let's see if we can get in a little bit closer because they, they won't last that long looking like this. You wait for so long to see a Digbiana or a Digbiana cross. And then there's only one bloom, and then it might not even last three weeks. With the temperatures we've been having recently, it's just been cool all the way through. Not cold, which is good. I'm glad it's not cold. But you know, cool, dull days, no, no real heat, a steady 17 degrees. I might get them to last a little bit longer than three weeks, but they won't look pristine. They won't look pristine for long. Oh, but my goodness. Oh, so, so beautiful. And two of them bloom for you, Tom Saunders and Dionysia Theodosis. So thank you, both of you, very, very much for your support here on my channel. stress spikes or not. This is van der Chau Praia, and I'm super happy that it is van der Chau Praia. Not all the spikes are open. I've got three here, and they are going to go green with Jyoti, Mommy Loves Gardening, and Anna's Orchid Garden. So I believe all three have channels. I know that Mommy Loves Gardening has, and Asna's Orchid Garden. I'm sure go green with Jyoti as well. The links will be in the description below. But I am quite happy to be able to stress spikes or not. I'm able to give these three a massive, massive thank you for the support on my channel. Thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. And another thing is, yes, this is a Vanda Chao Praia, which considering I got her from Thai orchids and more, oh, I don't know how many years ago, tag is somewhat buried in that moss pole that I have her on. I'm just glad it's it's Savannah Chow Praia because other orchids I've got from them were mislabeled. However, if you think that this color is a way too fuchsia to be a Chow Praia, I cannot maneuver the camera in such a way to give you the true deep purple, dark, dark purple of this bloom. This is, this is like a fuchsia almost. The actual bloom color, uh, let me think, let me think, what can I say? If you open a bottle of wine and you leave a little bit on the bottom of the glass of red wine, you leave it on the bottom of the glass for, let's say a day on your kitchen counter and you haven't washed it out yet. And you see the residue as you pour it into the sink and you see there's a very deep kind of purple on your glass. I don't know if any of you have that, but sometimes it happens. It's not even burgundy, but it's gorgeous. Let me just tell you, it's gorgeous. I have to say that I also like what I'm seeing on camera. And I'm sort of torn between the two of whether the camera is prettier or my real life color is prettier. But either way, uh, I mean, it would be awful to have a bloom that has a gorgeous color and doesn't even show pretty on camera. So <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, Chao Praia, she is not fragrant. And if I had to maneuver a little bit more, I could show you the whole plant but I just did that in an outdoor tour that the whole plant herself 
you know, she's been through a lot and she doesn't look as nice. And if the puppy would move, let's see if we can make this work. Ah, she's also facing the wrong way. Anyway, you will see Chao Praia in other videos in the future and I can show you the whole plant, but she's been through a lot. She's been through a lot of storms. She's cracked her crown twice. Sometimes I get so nervous about my orchids, I'm about to crack my own crown, but the ones in my mouth as opposed to the growth. But yeah, no, she's been through a lot. I'm sure she's going to survive. And yes, this has finally triggered spikes because for the first years that I've had her, not a single bloom. Never, ever, not a spike, nothing. In this case, I did get four spikes starting and one failed. Oh well, but these are so gorgeous. What you see here on the black spotting, that's ants. They got a little bit too excited with the happy sap of the buds. So that's why I'm filming her today, despite the fact I still have a spike that's about to open three more buds. And yeah, we will see her again in other videos because I am hoping to be able to show maybe another day the true color. I don't know, it's a bit of a cloudy day today. So I was hoping, yes, I'm gonna do it today. But here we are, I keep getting this pinkish, pinkish color. Still, I think she's gorgeous. And I'm just glad I've got three more names that I can get to. Go Green with Jyoti, Mummy Loves Gardening, and Asna's Orchid Garden. To the three of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody got a good drench over and over and over again. Depending on how the next deluge is, they will need another little fungicide spray. But I do like when it rains like this. It's just not warm enough for my angraecums. So we've just left Cousin It in the back. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please, please stay safe. Uh, we are doing our best here just to keep ourselves dry, especially indoors. And now I'm going to have to empty out masks. See that? I got to do that right now. I hope to see you back soon. Take care. Bye.